like to call this regularly scheduled meeting of the Harlington City Commission to order, which uh, the meeting has been duly posted. And at this time, I'd like to call upon uh, Mr. S uh, Sanchez to deliver our invocation. Heavenly Father, we come to you, you today asking for your blessing and support. If we start this meeting, help us to have a good discussion. Allow us to work in a group and get together for the community. We are seeing this thing in your name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming, and uh, some of you are going to get a chance to recognize, especially for service that you've done and service you're going to do. We appreciate that. But the first item on the agenda is uh, board recognition, and so at this time, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Chuck Mattingly, and Richard Newman, and Brent Hunter to come forward, please. series of proclamations and the first one is uh, the month of April 2015 as Fair Housing Month. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're 
present two of these to you. One, one, of, us, one of them is for current housing month, and the other one is for community development block grant week. So, whereas the National Fair Housing Act of 1968 and the Fair Housing Amendments Act of 1988 prohibit discrimination in housing and declare it a national policy to provide within constitutional limits for fair housing in the United States. Whereas the principle of fair housing is not only natural law and national policy, but a fundamental human concept and entitlement for all Americans. And whereas fair housing means that you may freely choose to place a residence without regard to your race, national origin, religion, sex, familial status, or handicap, it is your right to be treated in an equal and non discriminatory manner. Whereas the 39th anniversary of the National Fair Housing Law during the month of April provides an opportunity. For all Americans to recognize that complete success in the goal of equal housing opportunity can only be accomplished with the help and cooperation of all Americans. I therefore, I, Chris Boswell, Mayor of the City of Harlem, to hereby proclaim the month of April 2015 is Fair Housing Month in the City of Harlem and ask all citizens to join in this recognition. So we want to thank CPT board members for always reminding us of Fair Housing Month. Also, this proclamation, the uh, very that uh, April 6th, uh, as National Community Development Week of the National Community Development Association to celebrate the Community Development Block Grant Program. The Community Development Block Grant Program has its primary objective as development of viable urban communities by providing decent housing, a suitable living environment, expanding economic opportunities, principally for persons of low and moderate income. And whereas the City of Harlem <coughs> receives direct allocation from the Community Development Block Grant Program annually to provide services and resources for a wide variety of community development activities that principally benefit low and moderate income persons, including the elderly and children. And whereas in our community and in communities throughout the nation, for 39 years of community Development block grant program funding has developed a strong network of relationships among local governments, residents, businesses, and nonprofit organizations. Therefore, I, Chris Boswell, Mayor of the City of Arlington, do hereby proclaim the week of April 6th through April 11th as Community Development Block Grant Week and support in this value program that has made a tremendous contribution to the viability of the housing stock, infrastructure, public services, and economic vitality of our community. And I always want to thank our Community Development Block Grant Board members who work so hard. Uh, uh, it is a difficult uh, position to serve in in making uh, priority uh, choices about how these funds should be distributed. But in all cases, you all do a superb job in putting the citizens of Harlem and those that are who need it the most front and center and making sure that you spend these dollars wisely so that you can make their lives a little better in the areas of our city that they live in. So again, I want to thank each and every one of you for your service and all the other board members. Sir. 
Service to others is the hallmark of the American character and central to how we meet our challenges. And whereas the nation's mayors are increasingly turning to national service and volunteerism as a cost effective strategy to meet city needs, and whereas AmeriCorps and Senior Corps participate, participants address the most pressing challenges facing our cities and counties, from educating students for the jobs of the 21st century and supporting veterans and military families to providing health services and helping communities recover from natural disasters. And whereas national service expands the economic opportunity by creating more sustainable, resilient communities and providing education, career skills, and leadership abilities for those who serve. And whereas AmeriCorps and Senior Corps participants serve in more than 60,000 locations across the country, bolstering the civic neighborhood faith-based organizations that are so vital to our economic and social well-being. And whereas national service participants increase the impact of the organizations they serve, with both direct service and recruiting and managing uh, millions of additional volunteers, and whereas national service represents a unique public service, public and private partnership that invests in community solutions and leverages non-federal resources to strengthen community impact and increase the return on taxpayer dollars. And whereas national service participants demonstrate commitment, dedication, and patriotism by making an intensive commitment to service, a commitment that remains with them in their future endeavors. Therefore, be it resolved that I, Chris Boswell, Mayor of the City of Arlington, be hereby proclaim April 7, 2015 as National Service Recognition Day and encourage residents to recognize the positive impact of national service in our city thank those who serve and find ways uh, to give back to their communities. So this is a great example that you all set for our communities. To demonstrate, to show uh, everyone in our city that uh, volunteerism and service to the community is a very valuable and important thing. And it's something that you uh, are living examples of by all the work that you do to give back to our community. So we want to recognize our senior core and thank each and every one of you for the service that you do and everything you do back to our communities. So I'm going to hand this proclamation off to whoever's right here in the middle and, uh, and ask you, if, would you like to say anything about your service for members? Well, I'd like to uh, thank the City of Orange, the commissioners there, for allowing us to uh, provide services to the elderly, disabled, and handicapped. It makes people do a wonderful job. We're very dedicated and going to be our, our city is better off, or is better off, Thank because you. of what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
National Library we here resolve. I'm Chris Foster with this Mayor of the City of Arlington. To hear my proclamation of February 12th through the 18th as National Library Week, I encourage all the residents to visit our public library and take advantage of the wonderful library of resources available. Congratulations. Reading for a specific use permit to allow a dance reception hall 
where alcohol is permitted in the general GR district located at 1514 South 77th Sunshine Strip, Suite 11A, bearing a legal description of Lot 2, Block A, Treasure Hills Plaza Shopping Center. Uh, the applicant is Fel uh, Feliciano Drake. Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Uh, the applicant is requesting a specific use permit to allow uh, dance reception hall and event center of an existing uh, 8,000 square foot suite that's located in the Treasure Hills Plaza Shopping Center. This is a subject property, as you can see, it's located on uh, South 77 Sunshine Strip. Uh, this is the Treasure Hills Plaza. The subject uh, suite would be on the southeast corner of this plaza, which would be in this general area here. Uh, as you can see, the proposed plaza has sufficient parking for the proposed request. Uh, this is a proposed uh, suite, which would generally be from this location all the way to the edge of this uh, column here. Uh, the generally the hours of operation would be from Monday through Sunday from uh, 8 a.m. through uh, 12 uh, midnight. The request was reviewed by the building, the fire, health, and police department and staff received no objections to the request. Uh, we did notify the property owners within the 200 foot radius and received no objections. The public hearing was also conducted by the PNZ Commission. Uh, staff and PNZ Commission are recommended approval subject to the applicant. Uh, providing and maintaining the required parking, obtaining their proper permits, and, and complying with, with the required uh, ordinances from the appropriate city departments. Take any questions, and the applicant is also present for questions. This is an itemized public hearing. This is uh, one for the public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak for or against this specific use permit? Hearing that I'll close the public hearing and go to item B, which is to consider and take action to approve another ordinance on first reading for a specific use permit for the above mentioned location. And I ask the city attorney to read the caption. An ordinance amending the zoning ordinance number 7 27 of the city of Arlington <coughs> to issue a specific use permit to Fisliciana Drake to allow a dance reception hall where alcohol is permitted in a general retail district located at 1514 South 77 Sunshine Strip, Suite 11A. Bearing a legal description of Lot 2, Block A, Treasure Hills Plaza Shopping Center, Subdivision, Subject to 1, obtaining and maintaining the proper state permits, 2, providing and maintaining the required parking in accordance with city regulations, 3, complying with the requirements administered by planning and zoning, building inspections, environmental health, fire prevention, and police departments, providing for publication and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance on the first Second. reading? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. The motion carries. <laughs> Item six is a public hearing to consider an ordinance on first reading for the renewal of a specific use permit to allow a bar lounge in the general retail district located at 640 North Ed Carey Drive, bearing a legal description of lot four, block one, Harlingen South Point Subdivision Unit Two, the applicant, Justin Kimberly. Mayor Commissioners, uh, this is a renewal of an existing uh, specific use permit that was issued back in uh, September, approved by this commission back in September of 2014. <coughs> the applicant is coming back for renewal. Uh, see the property is located on Fifth Carry Drive. This is a subject building known as Hot Shots Bar. Uh, the applicant is proposing to continue the same uh, operating hours, which would be uh, Monday through Sunday from 3:30 uh, p.m. to uh, 2 a.m. The request was reviewed by the building, fire, health, and police departments. Uh, building, fire, health. Uh, reported no objections to the request. The police department did note that there's three out of the nine surveillance cameras that were not operable and the applicant would have to repair those cameras. Did speak with the applicant today and he did indicate that he did purchase those three new cameras and is waiting to have those installed. He is here present to acknowledge that. Uh, we did have a public hearing before the PNZ Commission and property owners within a two and foot, two, excuse me, 200 foot <coughs> radius of this property were notified. <coughs> and staff received no objection to the request. Staff and PNZ Commission are recommended approval subject to the applicant maintaining the required parking, maintaining his proper permits, uh, make sure, making sure that the <coughs> surveillance cameras are repaired in, in operable uh, uh, form, as well as uh, providing the, the required licensed security guard and complying with the requirements of the appropriate city departments. I'll take any questions, and the applicant is also present for questions. Yeah, do we know how long those three cameras were inoperable? That I don't know. No, sir, I, don't. And I guess I have a question. It's a police question. Right. Are cameras ever checked once, a, once an establishment is open? I don't know if anybody can answer that. 
Yes, sir. Deputy Commissioner Mayor. Uh, yes, they are checked periodically, but at this time I don't have the, the last time that those particular cameras were checked. Uh, general question uh, for these types of establishments, is there a routine calendar check? Yes, sir, once cameras? yearly. Once yearly? Yes, sir. Along the same line of question, we also make a mandatory 30-day retention. Do we confirm the 30-day retention? <clears throat> yes, sir. We do, to, we do confirm yes, sir. that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so based on when you did the inspection, three cameras not working, the 30-day retention was working? Uh, at, at this time, I'm not sure on that, sir. I'd have to check. Okay. I, I think it's important that we're going to put these stipulations on these. Uh, the other question was, when, we, when this came before us, we had noted a very long list of calls. Yes, sir. And we, you gave us a two-year history. Yes, sir. And we should have only gotten a six-month history just to determine uh, maybe an 18 and then a six because the, the, the I think the real question or the hesitation was, um, was it better or worse? I mean, where are we with that? Yes, sir. We had 36 calls, didn't we, in the last <coughs> six months? For, for the last six months, I, I show here, Correct, correct, like last six months, uh, well, there was five offense, offenses that were called in, uh, <coughs> that, but there was like 36 calls out there the last six months. I don't recall the number of those that were bar checks, but there were a couple that were bar checks. My, my question is, is so know, so. how much is excessive? Right. Um, you know, we did this uh, for six months because we wanted to see how it would go and there were 30 some odd calls in six months and the cameras weren't working. So uh, are, what are we proposing in terms of renewal? Uh, this is a full renewal or is this a six month renewal or what is this? This is what the board approves for a full renewal. One year. Sir, repeat. A, a full renewal, a full renewal for the in perpetuity. Um, for the Normally we do a one year and then we review it, but this one we did a six month. This one was done for six months. Then I have a question. Uh, the uh, gentleman says he has the cameras. Uh, how will we know that they're installed and working properly? We can have an officer out there go and check them, sir. In what time span? We could have that done tomorrow if you requested. Yeah, I, I think it would be prudent. Yes, sir. I think one thing I'd like to add to that, I think it's, it was an important consideration when we as a commission made the decision to make that stipulation. And I know I really supported that because that would help the police department in the event there was an incident out there uh, from an evidentiary standpoint that you'd have some video. So I, it, it'd be more for Carlos, for you and staff to make sure that if we have that on, <coughs> on the books as far as a, a requirement, that that information should be included in the recommendation by staff. And there's other things that staff looks at, right? When they make the recommendation for approval of a of an SUP, um, if we have it in there, I think we should have some system that's uniform. It's not just to pick on this one particular applicant, but for every applicant, every SUP where we have that requirement, we should have a system in place that is not just arbitrary, but it's, it's a system where you know that you check. If it's every year that that's documented, and that would be included in the review and the recommendation for the approval. That way there's no question and there's no perception of either favoritism or the fact that we have something on the books but we don't actually meet it. You know, we don't we don't enforce it. Yeah, one thing I every time we've had one of these I always keep asking the same question. Who's checking the cameras and and, what, and is that retention? I, I think it's important if we're gonna put these in there that we actually have something in place yes, sir. to to do that. And then you come back and report that there's three cameras out in six months. That that's very concerning to me, not from the applicant standpoint, from our standpoint. I mean, the idea behind the, the six-month deal was, you know, let's see how it goes and show us some improvement. And, you know, 36 calls, nine cases were reported and included in the attached report of the nine cases. Seven arrests were made and included four <coughs> public intoxications, one warrant service, and two assaults. Um, you know, I don't know whether Chili's and Applebee's have that same record. Uh, they're not, uh, they, they serve food and may be different, but I mean, we, we seem to have some, uh, a little bit of a pattern here, and we gave them a six-month deal to try to, you know, fix that. 
and we got three cameras out and continued with 36 calls. And so once we give them this, uh, 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 you know, approval today, they don't have to ever come back again. <coughs> to me, it would seem prudent to do six more months and see if we can't get the cameras working. And when we go back and check in six months, if the cameras on are, aren't all working, <coughs> then maybe the deal's over. Um, because that, this was kind of a probationary period is the way I looked at it, and um, I don't know that that's a great record for being on probation. Uh, about uh, Because a proprietor, it seems to me, has some responsibility to either uh, uh, refuse service to patrons that are uh, intoxicated or uh, try to call the police maybe before there is an assault, if it looks like they've got two guys that are about to get into it. You know, there needs to be some proactive stuff on it. I'm not picking on this one applicant, but I'm just saying when we come in and we do a six-month extension uh, to see how it's going to go, um, I don't know that we got an A-plus on the report card here. I mean, I don't know how staff feels about that or the police department. Well, yeah, what, you know, I think, what, I think what's bothering everybody is uh, we, we need to feel like we need to, we, seems to the, <coughs> seems to us like there needs to be some standard here on how much is too much. Because if they're, you know, if in six months, well, over two years, 189 calls, you know, over six months, you know, 36 calls, every, every time, or every time you have a bar check, or every time you have a call, that means that, you know, patrolmen's get pulled off of what he's supposed to be doing, right? Correct. I mean, we're pulling resources away from the rest of the community just to service, you know, just to keep the peace at this one place. And so that's, I think, what's really bothering everybody. And, and at some point, we need to say, that's, that's too many. And you can't, you know, we don't, that we don't want to, we don't want to renew this permit if it's going to continue to be a drain on our precious resources. You know, they can go someplace else and Get like that kind of activity, not in our city. So um, we need to have a public hearing on this, and then the commission can decide what they want to do about the ordinance. I'll open the public hearing. Is there uh, anyone who would like to speak for or against the specific use permit? I would like to speak. Well, you know, come to the podium, state you know what you to do. State your name and your residence address. Yolanda Charlotte, uh, 280 something. Uh, Altas, uh, Altas, what is your residence address? Altas Palmas, 285 Altas Palmas. Uh, you sure? know what? I don't understand the city of Harlingen. These people have a business, and there's other business probably doing the same thing and breaking. The, the police is there to serve and to protect our community, okay? And these people, the cameras didn't work. Are we trying to ask them out of town? Are we trying to say that these people are breaking the law when other people are breaking the law? Let me <coughs> tell you what I, uh, the other day. I was at the Valle Vista Mall, and do you know that they do not have security out there? Our police officers are wasting their time at Sun Valley Mall when they can be taking care of the community. The other, they're closed, but if somebody breaks into Sun Valley Mall, the police are out there to protect and to serve. Now these people, if you call the police, you are punished. <coughs> this is basically what it is. You're punishing the community for calling the police because something may or may not happen. You can't take the law into your own hands, start getting the gun or start getting the knife and start stabbing people there. You gotta give people a chance. You're running everybody out of town. This is wrong. You give these people permission and give them another chance. And if you're punishing them because they're calling the police, that's what it's for. But yet if you call the Sun Valley Mall or the, the Valle Vista Mall, that's a waste of taxpayers' money. He's got money. Let him pay his own security. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak for or against a specific use permit? I know. My name is Justin Kerling. I'm the owner of Hot Shots Bar. Can you state uh, your residence address? Oh, 640 North Ed Carey Drive. Is that your residence address? No. My residence is uh, 28057 Hatch Road, Rio Hondo. But 
That's my bar. Um, on the stuff about the cameras, <coughs> they'll be done this Saturday. I did away with the old ones. I've got 16 brand new coming in. They'll be up and functioning on Saturday. As well as with uh, the DVR retention for 30 days, we can make it as long as you want. Well, maybe up to about three months. As well, I'm going to those calls here. I did my homework this time. I pulled up some of the calls for some of the other can bars. Can you push well. the mic up a little bit towards you? Oh, towards yeah. you. There you go. You're, I'm sorry. You're, you're a tall man. Oh, all right, there you go. Uh, as for the call, sir, <coughs> I pulled up some of the call records for some of the other bars if you'd like to see that. Out of the 36 calls, I checked on mine. They said about five. The rest are, I mean, business checks, traffic stops, motorist assist. Unfortunately, they go up against me. I don't know why. I understand as a police officer, you call out for your station, say you pull somebody over right at the Whataburger. You don't know the address there. You use 640 North Dead Carry Drive. You can put it into the system. It says Hot Shots Lounge, somewhere around that vicinity. Those, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> those shouldn't be uh, directly inquiring with me. Um, as the other ones, the, well, the record that I pulled up, I see about five of them. I don't see any assaults. I didn't get those records. But uh, 36 calls compared to some of the other ones that have way over, over mine. And that's just in a six-month period. I pulled the six-month records from those bars up until then. I don't know if you want to see them or... Do we? Well, I just got one copy right here of uh, the calls that are in question. I'm not, I'm not sure what he. I'm not sure what. Uh, the the call right. logs. The call logs. You say I have 36 calls. I pulled up several of the bars on here where they have a range of calls worse than mine. You want to read those to us? Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I really don't want to call out any of the bar's names, that's the thing. I don't want to, I don't want to be biased on anybody. Okay, well, let's, let's see if there's any, anyone else who'd like to speak for or against the right. government. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hearing no one, I'll close the hearing and then go on to item B, which is to consider and take action to approve an ordinance on first reading for a specific use permit for the above mentioned location. And I'd like to ask the city to read the caption. The ordinance amending the zoning ordinance at number 7 27 of the city of Arles to issue a specific use permit to Justin Cameron to allow a bar, to allow a bar lounge in a general retail district located at 640 North End Carry. Uh, bearing a legal description on lot 4, block 1, Harlan's and South Point subdivision unit 2, subject to 1, maintaining. <coughs> The existing off-street parking spaces to maintaining the proper state and TABC permits. Three must repair the non-operable cameras and maintain video surveillance on all entrances and exits and maintain a 30-day retention of the video. Four continue to provide adequate lighting on the premises. Five continue to provide a licensed security guard in the parking lot during peak hours of operation on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. Six, comply with requirements administered by the Planning, Building, Health, Fire, and Police Departments, providing for publication on ordaining other matters the foregoing. Okay, is there a motion to adopt the ordinance uh, on first reading, or is there a motion to adopt the ordinance with amendments on first reading? Well, I'd like to, 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 to approve this bar and give it another chance of six months and, and uh, fix those cameras. And, see what happens. Okay. And I don't know what can be done about the calls that are attributed to your bar. And, and I understand what you're talking about. I mean, you're, you're sort of getting the brunt here of us having to deal with these SUPs where we come in and the, the uh, requirement is for cameras and retention. And there seems to be a problem there. I don't know exactly how we're going to address that, but we have somebody check you know, at the time you do it, and then there's no follow-up check. It's a requirement, but there's no <coughs> department in the city that's responsible for following up or doing a spot check to make sure that those cameras and that retention is there. And we may need to address that in another way. But again, this situation was, is that you knew you had a six-month permit, and you knew they were going to come back and inspect you, and when they went back, you know, you've got three cameras that are inoperable. Now, for all I know, you only need 10 and not 16 or whatever you've got. So, um, but when they come out there and they find broken things that aren't functioning and you're supposed to be doing it, that's that's the issue, I guess. And so, 
I'd be inclined to go along with let's do this for six more months and see if we can't see some improvement. And you need to be vigilant, I guess, and maybe working with the police department. And if somebody's drunk at Whataburger, don't let them put down 640 or they carry drive. I, I do have one concern. Oh, well, does it cost the business owner anything to come to these? I mean, is he having to pay an applicant fee or anything like that? Yeah, the applicant okay. fee would be $250 unless you waive the fee for the next week. I, I, I would say that we should waive the fee. I, I don't want to pick on you. I, I think my real point, I think all of our points is we as a city need to do a better job at monitoring what we establish here. I don't want to, I don't want to be punitive here in any way or form. And so let's waive the fee. Where would be the next SUP number, correct? Yes. The answer is yes. Okay. Uh, that, and so that's, so, so is that that's two amendments? Amendment? Well, I think I think Commissioner Sanchez made the motion to adopt the ordinance with the amendment of it only lasting six months. Right. It's a six-month SUP, so he made that motion. Now, uh, Commissioner Leal would like to amend it. He's made a motion to amend it further to say that the next application will be will waive the application fee, and you'll accept that amendment. Yeah. But he waived the fee and save him some money. Right. And we need a, a second to the motion to amend, I think. Second. Or, or he can he can withdraw his amendment and restate it. With the, I'll just, yeah. Okay. Two percent. Two percent. So, two two percent. so we, now we have a motion about the ordinance uh, with the amendment and, and the motion to second with the amendment to amend it to waive the two hundred fifty dollar fee. Is there any discussion? Just one more point. I think that some, a couple of things I think we know that staff need to follow up on. And uh, I know from a police department standpoint, you know, I'm familiar with some of these reports that are done in the studies. Uh, one of the things that we have to do is is sort of separate, because it, it's very true. I mean, when an officer checks out at a location, a lot of times for the system itself, they just identify it with a particular address. I saw some of the reports in, that are associated with this particular SUP that they were traffic stops that occurred there, but they were tagged towards that bar. So in, in fairness to not just this applicant, but every applicant, we just need to make sure that when staff does that report that they're able to actually do a good comprehensive study of that so that we can separate what's actually attributed to that establishment so that we don't have varied interpretations of that information at this site. So I think it'll be helpful, not, not just for this one, but any future ones. That might necessarily be a condition for the for this this action here, but it's just an observation for staff just to make sure that we follow up on that for future SUPs. Yeah. Well, no, and I, I but that's a good but that's a good point, and I think it, the the uh, the recurring issue I think that the commission has with these is that we don't seem that the maybe PD needs to really. <coughs> be more uh, reassuring to us if this is a this is an acceptable number of, of calls or it's not I mean this is you know obviously there's going to be there there there's going to be potential for calls at establishments like this but we need to know we need to have a feel for whether or not this is out of the ordinary and because we don't have to give them an SUP. All right, so we have any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. I suppose, like sign, the motion carries. Item seven uh, is a public hearing to consider and take uh, action on an ordinance on first reading for a specific use permit to allow a bar lounge in a general GR retail district located at 204 West Jackson, bearing a legal description of lots 13 through 16, block 45, Arlington Original Town Site. The applicant is Luis Betancourt. Mayor Commissioners, uh, the applicant is requesting a specific use permit to allow a bar lounge, in this case a wine bar, out of a 3,200 square foot building that's located on uh, Jackson and A Street. This is a subject property, and this is a photo of the subject building. The building, like I said, is a little over 3,200 square feet. The post name of the business would be uh, Carlitos Wine House. Uh, the hours of operation would be uh, Monday uh, through Wednesday from 11 a.m. to uh, 8 p.m. And then uh, Thursdays from 12 p.m. to 11 uh, p.m. And then 
Fridays and Saturdays from 12 p.m. to 12 midnight, and on Sundays from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, the building, fire, and health and police department reviewed the request, and re staff received no objection to the request. The property owners in the 200-foot radius uh, also were notified, and staff received no object objections to the request. The downtown board also approved the uh, SOP for the wine bar. Uh, staff at PNC are recommending approvals subject to the bar being limited to one year. Uh, the applicant will also have to provide a uh, licensed security guard during peak hours of operation, uh, surveillance video <coughs> inside and outside the building with a 30-day retention of the video, uh, appropriate lighting on the premises, <coughs> as well as to maintain his proper permits and complying with the requirements of the building, fire, health, and police departments. Take any questions, and the applicant is also present for questions. Yes, just to reiterate, because of our last uh, item up here, cameras will be installed. Correct, they will. Okay, we need to conduct a public hearing, so I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak for or against this SUP? Hearing now, I'll close the public hearing and uh, uh, consider to take action to approve an ordinance on first reading for the specific use permit for the above mentioned location to ask the city attorney to review the caption. An ordinance amending the zoning ordinance number 7 27 with the city of Arlington to issue a specific use permit to Louise C. Bettendorf to allow a bar lounge in a general retail district located at 204 West Jackson bearing a legal description of lots 13 through 16, block 45. Arlington original town site, subject to one, the specific use permit would be uh, limited to one year and the applicant would be required to reapply for a renewal. Two, obtain and maintain proper state and TABC permits. Provides to, three, provide surveillance video and maintain a 30-day retention of the video. Four, provide adequate lighting <coughs> of the premises. Uh, five, provide a licensed security guard during peak hours, and six, comply with requirements administered by the planning, building, inspections, fire prevention, and police department prior to issuance of a certificate of occupancy, providing for publication or ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance? So, for the <coughs> so moved, Mayor. Second. Okay. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. The motion carries. Item eight, consider and take action to appoint Diana Vargas as the local registrar for the city of Arlington. Mayor, commissioners, uh, this action is needed to appoint a new local registrar. Uh, Diana Vargas is recommended for the position. Does anybody know this young lady? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Well, uh, you know, she, she's done a great job and we're so really thankful for what she's done. We're sad to see her uh, go, but we understand that uh, it's a better position for Thank you for, for your good job. You know, you give a speech and I know that she's used to work before with it. Yes. <laughs> well, we're going to miss her here in City Hall. We're gonna, we, uh, she's always you know, a smile on her face and cheerful and uh, knows how to, you know, uh, can take a punch. Not from us, <laughs> but from the public sometimes. You know, she great at customer service, and we're really proud that she's going to stay on our team and take on this new responsibility for the city of Arlington. So, assuming they all agree to this, we want to congratulate you. But I'll let, I'll let them make a motion in the second. If we don't agree, she gets to stay. Right? <laughs> is, there a, is there a motion? I'll make a so motion. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Congratulations, Deanna. Thank you. All right. Good luck. We know you'll do a great job over there for us. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Item 9, board appointment. Done. Item 10, citizen communication. Done. All right. Then we're, we're adjourned. I want to wish everybody here a happy Easter. Have a wonderful and joyous Easter weekend. <laughs>